All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Lance LaDuke. I am so glad to see you. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I uh, want to talk to you about BHAGs because I think BHAGs can be a very uh, transformative um, uh, experience for you and can help um, bridge the gap. Uh, between now and the end of the summer. We're all facing a uh, interesting time and we're um, our normal habits and patterns have been completely disrupted. And so um, it's caused or allowed, depending on your perspective, uh, allowed us the opportunity to look at the things that we were doing and decide, are they the things that we want or need to be doing? And then what are some other things that we might want to be doing that we weren't doing before? And so in general, I wanna to talk to you about how to, uh, how to think through this time and how to use these new patterns um, to your benefit. <clears throat> uh, so it's going to be hands-on. I wanna encourage you to have something to write with and something to write on, or it can be uh, in your, uh, on your phone or on your computer, but just some place to take notes because I want to challenge you to take specific steps to, to getting to a new place in your um, development as a, a player, teacher, a human, whatever it is that you wanna work on. And that's the beautiful part about the things that I'm gonna talk to you about today is that they're, the skills are transferable. That the things that uh, I'm going to talk to you about, we'll, we'll, we will look at through a lens of, of music making, but um, they're not um, limited to that. In fact, if you wanted to get better at any kind of skill, uh, from cooking to some sort of exercise thing to learning a language, uh, these are transferable skills. So if you can learn this system, then, then there's nothing that you can't tackle. So let's talk about the BHAG um, uh, right out of the gate here. So a BHAG stands for a big, hairy, audacious goal. And a big, hairy, audacious goal is just what it sounds like. I borrowed this term uh, from a guy named Jim Collins. This is where I first uh, saw a reference to it. I don't know if it was his idea or where, where he got it, but um, in a uh, series of books, he's a, one of my favorite books is a book called Good to Great. And it's about why some organizations thrive and others struggle. And what is it about the organizations that continue to strive? What do they have in common? And so this notion of a BHAG is uh, uh, something that I found there and something that I've found to be incredibly powerful. And so, as I mentioned before, all of our patterns are disrupted. If you were going to school, um, you are now taking classes through um, uh, a screen right now. If you were teaching, you're teaching through a screen. If you were used to going out and doing anything, you know that that is all gone in a very, very interesting and disruptive um, uh, direction. And so what it has done is it's shuffled the deck in our schedules, our daily, our weekly, monthly schedules. And it's easy uh, to lose track of what's important. And it's easy to let the days just sort of fall into one another. Um, and it's easy to just sort of get into the la lazy river of life <clears throat> and just sort of let the current take you wherever you, uh, wherever you end up is wherever you end up. I want to suggest to you that you will have a much better and more rewarding uh, life and time, particularly in these next few months, if you take the bull by the horns and you look for opportunities to grow. And the beautiful part, if you're getting done with school, well, now you have a big, wide open uh, part of your calendar that you can utilize um, pretty much as you see fit. And so we're not unfamiliar with goal setting and we're going to get into goal setting. Uh, uh, we're going to pick it apart and I'm hopefully I'm going to create, help you create a, uh, an action plan for you over the next hundred days, say. So, but the first thing that you have to do is you have to decide on what your big, hairy, audacious goal is. And so let's look at each of those. So it needs to be a, a huge goal, something that scares you a little bit. So um, I'll give you uh, an example. For me, I'm, I'm running a 5K. I, I ran in high school, not very fast, but I did run some. And uh, I, you could probably tell by looking at me that high school was some number of years ago. And so I decided that I wanted to come out the other side of quarantine um, in better shape than I went into it. 
And so I've been um, running. And so I set a big, hairy, audacious goal, uh, which was to run a 5K. And I'm doing that on June 2nd. And uh, that will complete that cycle for that big, hairy, audacious goal. And I might refer back to it, actually, <clears throat> uh, because there are some takeaways there from a non-musical setting that I think apply to, to any of the things that we're, we're trying to accomplish. Hairy uh, and big and hairy and audacious are all words to indicate that it needs to be a little, you need to have some skin in the game. You need to be a little bit frightened about it. If you're not 100% sure that you can tackle this thing, then you're on the right track. And so it could be that you want to learn jazz improvisation. It could be that you want to learn all of your major and minor scales. It could be that you want to um, memorize uh, some standard of the repertoire that you just, you just love. It could be that you want to make an overdub video that um, uh, uh, that you see so many of um, online. And it might be that, uh, ah, I don't know what it is for you, but let's take, uh, I'll give you a minute. So I'm going to sh shut my pie hole for one minute, and I want you to come up with a list of potential big, hairy, audacious goals. On your marks, get set, go. In fact, while you're doing it, I'll write down one. I'll write down one that I'm working on this summer. I see some good ones popping up in the chat. This is fantastic. The more, the better. Good one, Robin. Okay, that's more or less a minute. Um, I'll let you, um, if you still, <clears throat> if other ideas come to you, collect them. I don't know if you're like me, but if I don't write it down, if it's not recorded somewhere, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to it's not going to occur. Uh, so now you have one or more big, hairy, audacious goals. The beautiful part is you can tackle all of them. My advice to you would be that you tackle them sequentially rather than all at once because you don't want to burn out. Um, and then uh, the other trick is that we need to figure out a way to get from from point. And what is beautiful about that is that um, um, it is, but if I get one, um, uh, one more scale than I, than I um, know now, I guess I got better at it, but I want you to really think about quantifying it. And I see there's a question about why are the goals hairy? Well, it's just a, it's a, just sort of a fun um uh, alliteration, a big, hairy, audacious goal, a BHAG is just something that kind of pops you out of bed in the morning. You're like, I got to do this thing because it's it's a little bit daunting. There's an old um, phrase, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer is one bite at a time. And so um, what we now have is a set of these potential goals. I'll show you mine. Mine is to record songs from Beck's song reader. And I don't know if you know the, the, the singer Beck, but Beck um, about eight years ago, came out with a thing called Song Reader. And I should have had it here at my disposal to show you. But um, in lieu of a, a, a recorded album, he wrote 20 songs. And then he um, commissioned artists to turn them into sheet music that looks like it had been created a uh, hundred years ago. They look like they were all created in the Tin Pan Alley era. And so they, and some of them have fake ads on the back and, and whatever. But um, so he, the, the idea for this project was that uh, there would be no definitive recording. There is no definitive Beck recording of these 20 songs. And his hope was that people would just sort of take them and put out their own version of them and that those versions were as valid as any others. Where usually in popular music, there's like you heard the, you know, whichever version that you heard Beyonce do, that's kind of the one. And then people can do versions of that, but you're always referring back to that one. And in this instance, he just put them out of sheet music so there wouldn't be a the one. And so for me, one of my big goals for this summer, the biggest, hairiest, most audacious goal that I'm going to do is I'm going to record um, somewhere between 
half and all of those songs. Now, I, I realize I'm giving myself a little wiggle room, and that's because I don't know how many I can get done over the course of the summer. The big, hairy, audacious goal is to record all 20 of them, but then realistically, I'm looking at it, and I'm trying to figure out, well, how much time do I have to accomplish this? And so this is where the rubber meets the road and where we're going to sort of turn the conversation into how to make these things uh, possible. How do we bring them into reality? So I'm going to pause before we um, uh, move into that. I want to take a look at some of the questions, any of the questions that have come up. So we're running a five. Okay, very good. So running a half a marathon. Awesome. Playing electric bass is an interesting one. Let's talk about that one in a second. Finish writing a book is a great one. Get all the major and minor turnaround scales, thirds and arpeggios on saxophone. Spectacular. Start a rock band could be a really cool one. Run a 5K and the Stars and Stripes we talked about. Alyssa, I hope that I explained uh, the uh, question uh, from um, from Josh um, about the big hairy. Idea. Okay, good. So that's good. And then had to read all the books that I had planned to read before I got out of quarantine is another fantastic one from Zach. So, all right, so let's look at the uh, the difference between, there's two I'm gonna pick apart right now. And one of them is run a half marathon and one of them is learn to play electric bass. Run a half marathon is a, is a fantastic because it is a fixed distance. A half marathon is 13.1, I think, right? Is it 13.1? Uh, Lisa, somebody help me out. It's it, roughly 13 miles. So that, that's clear. There's a beginning and an end. And if you're doing, you know, if we're still under quarantine, then you'll have to do the half marathon the way I'm doing the 5K, which is virtually, there's a thing called the big run. And I just have to, I have a gizmo that'll tell me the distance that I ran and then I have to submit it. Um, but what's nice about it is that there is a super clear, easy to understand, I made the 13 miles or I didn't make the 13 miles. Now, 13.1, thank you, Lisa. Uh, so then, um, Learn to play electric bass. Here's the problem with that one. What is that? I mean, what do you mean by learn to play the electric bass? Do you mean that I can play along with every police record and I've learned all of the um, tunes that uh, I've learned every uh, bass part to every police tune that Sting played or every bass part that Paul McCartney played on every Beatles track that he played on? So it could be that I'm going to learn to play the electric bass, meaning that I can just like jam with my friends on the three chord song and I know where um, <laughs> C, F and G are. And then I can play along with them on any tune that's in C, F and G. So we need to know more information about that goal in order for it to be a thing that we can turn into um, a reality. And so we need to ask some questions. So what do I mean? Uh, oh, three songs from 10 Summoner's Tales or something like that is a perfect example. Now we have a big, hairy, audacious goal. So, and in 10 Summoner's Tales, this, uh, memory serves, that's, that was a solo Sting album. So you're testing my, my, my memory banks. And I believe, based on the title, there were 10 tunes there. So your goal is to be able to play along on the bass to three of those 10 tunes. Fantastic. That's exactly right. And that's how you have a big, hairy, audacious goal that you can then turn into practice. Now, as inspiration, I pulled up a couple of videos and I mentioned it is excellent. I totally agree. I pulled up um, uh, a couple of things. I want to show you one. One of the things that's been happening a lot lately are these overdub videos and these compilation videos that that come by that are just sort of amazing to watch. And that is a thing that a lot of people are tackling, and I'm actually involved with a couple of projects like that. But just before we launch into the, the next section, which is about smart goals, I want to show you the, the guy who made this one is a buddy of mine. His name's Christopher Bill. The video is about five minutes long, but he stops playing after about half of it, and then it becomes an ad. So I'll start it, and then when it turns into an ad, I'll, I'll come back to talk to you. Let's see if I know how to do this right. I think I did it. <laughs>
Hey, Lance. You just need to turn your audio back on. How's that? Perfect. Perfect. Sorry about that. Um, so Chris is a huge inspiration, and I think he's a great example of somebody who, who just goes after BHAG after BHAG. So now let's take a look at um, how to turn this into a, a thing for you. So I wrote a book um, maybe 10 years ago. Uh, I should know the date. Anyway, it's, uh, it's called The Music Practice Coach. And it's five workouts to get to encourage you to be more organized in your practice and be more and to optimize your practice. And actually, you can if you want to get a free copy of it, if you go to my website, which is lastloduke.com, enter in your email, you can get a free PDF of the book um, and go through it at your own pace. But I'm a big fan of creating uh, SMART goals. And so SMART goals is a, uh, uh, an acronym that came out of the business world. And I've modified it slightly uh, for our use as musicians. And so um, that's the place to go next. Once you have your BHAG, then you need to create a smart, hole, smart goal for it. And so uh, this, the, the letters in the word smart are the steps that you need, the, the ingredients that you need in order to tackle this goal. So in order for a goal to be a SMART goal, it needs to be specific and measurable. There needs to be actions and resources over time with some sort of time um, element involved. We're going to unpack all of that now. <clears throat> so I want you to imagine one of your SMART goal, I'm sorry, one of your BHAGs. So and make sure that you've turned it into not I want to get better at the bass or learn the bass, but I want to learn three songs from 10 Summoner's Tales so that it is a specific and measurable goal. And those are the first two steps. Those are the two that go hand in hand with any of these things. Um, I want to be able to run a half marathon is both specific and measurable all in one. Um, if you wanted to, as you get. So for me, for with my 5K goal. I just want to cross the finish line. I just want to get to 3.1 miles and be able to uh, high five my son who's running with me and uh, know that I just got over the finish line. As if I decide to stay with it, it can be the case that I want to get more specific and more measurable um, on the 5K. I want to increase my time or I want to increase my distance or I want to continue running. And so the, the goal can modify. But for me, the goal is accomplished if I finish the 3.1 miles, that's it. That's as specific and measurable as it needs to be. Hey, thank you for the link to my book. Um, and now um, for the scales, it can be the case. Oh, there were some great ones in here in the chat. So let's look at um, that all major and minor turnaround scales, thirds and arpeggios on saxophone is spectacular because that's a list. You can go print that list out. If you wanted to go find them, that's a thing. And then, um, well, and then I will ask one more question, Robin, if you could respond. Um, when you say get all major and minor turnaround scales, thirds and arpeggios on saxophone, what we need in order for this to be a, uh, uh, a specific and measurable goal is that we need to know in what patterns, at what speed, how many octaves, memorized, so we, there's way more specificity and uh, aspects of that goal that we need to be able to measure in order for us to plot our course. So if I, I'll use a GPS analogy. So uh, when we used to get into the car and drive to places to do things, which is not so much now, but in general. So let's say I was going to get in my car and drive to Jan Grand Junction, Colorado. My GPS needs to know a couple of things. It needs to know where I am and it needs to know where I'm going. And so I could type in, um, uh, I'm in Pennsylvania and I'm going to Colorado. And that's kind of broad categories. Or I'm in the Eastern time zone and I'm going to the mountain time zone. Okay, I mean, yeah, I, I know you're going to turn, you're, you're going to, I'm going to go out of my house and head towards the sun. I'm gonna follow the sun if it's past noon. And then I hope that eventually I will get to Colorado. So um, if the if the uh, GPS is functioning, then it needs to know two things. It needs to know where I am and where am I specifically. 
I need to know what is the address, not just Pennsylvania, not just the East Coast, but where, okay, I'm in Pittsburgh, where in Pittsburgh, I'm in a town called Mount Lebanon, on what street, at what address. Okay, that's that's the starting point. So for Robin, thank you, Pat, for, you've got um, <laughs> one paragraph at a time, that's okay. So Robin is gonna take over the, uh, the chat for a little bit, because I've asked her to. Um, so now Robin's getting way more um, uh, specific. And so now this is going to be exactly what uh, she needs to get to where she's going. And where she's going is the other end of the GPS. So Colorado is, I don't know if you've been, it's a big state. So I need to know where in the state of Colorado. I need to know what city, I need to know what street address. And that is what will allow the GPS to know we're going from here and we're going to there. And then to propose a route and to propose and to suggest the amount of time that it will take by various means. So if you've used Google Maps, you know, it'll say, are you driving? Are you walking, riding a bike, public transportation? Are you flying? Like, how are you getting there? And then it, 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 uh, it interprets all that information and suggests that here is the right course. And here's about how long it will take for you to get there. So now that we know so many um, uh, more things about Robin's goal, well, we can really start to plot a course for that. So um, uh, Robin will print out the, the, um, all the materials that she needs to have the, the scales, turnarounds, our thirds and arpeggios. I can't remember if that was, was close to it. And then uh, on a piece of paper or somewhere, we can write down, okay, so these need to be at um, 120 beats per minute. They're gonna be swung and they're going to be memorized. And now it's, I did it, I didn't do it, right? It's, there's just no, there's no two ways about it. I accomplished the goal or I didn't accomplish the goal. <clears throat> um, and we're going to talk about the time part in some depth because that one, there's a little bit of adjusting, shall we say, that has to happen just because of, of life. Uh, I'll go back to the, uh, um, uh, uh, the directions analogy. So if you're driving from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Grand Junction, Colorado, and I hit traffic or construction or a storm or I have to use the restroom or I get hungry or I get sleepy. Well, now all of a sudden that projected time that by which I will get there, I have to, I'll have to fudge it. It could also be the case that if there's no traffic like now and the GPS isn't aware of traffic patterns, well, I might, I might make better progress than I had planned on. Um, and so it could be the case and is often the case with us when we're learning a new skill that some of the things that we think won't take very long, beg your pardon, take much longer than we thought they would. And other things that we thought might be a challenge and we, we, we gave ourselves all this time to do, we were able to accomplish in much less time. So when we get to the time one, um, uh, we'll pick it up from there. But let's talk about the A and the R. So we've created our big, hairy, audacious goal. We've picked one. We've made it specific and measurable. Now we know that it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And now we have actions and resources that we need to get us to our goal. <clears throat> and the actions are the verbs, the resources are the nouns. It's super simple. So uh, in Robin's uh, example, she will, um, let's look at the resources first, because those are maybe a little more self-evident. Uh, self she needs a saxophone. <laughs> she needs potentially a recording device. She may need a printer or a screen on which to, from which to read these things. Uh, uh, a metronome, a tuner, reads, um, a music stand, time, um, potentially a teacher. Uh, eh, eh, all the stuff. What's all the stuff that you need? Either physical or or, or um, symbolic. So time would be a, more of a symbolic one. And then um, what are the actions? Well, I'm going to read through them all once a day. I'm going to work on one a week, which is, as you see, we're, you know, spoiler alert, we're heading towards the time one. Um, I will sit down, I'll approach a teacher, I'll watch a YouTube video, I'll listen to some of the greats on saxophone to hear how they accomplished it so I know what sound I'm trying to emulate when I'm working on these turnarounds. So those are the things that I'm going to do and you'll notice that with the actions and the resources, they often suggest more of one kind or another. So I said I'm gonna get online and listen to um, examples of how Charlie Parker dealt with scales and or arpeggios and getting in, in and out of turnarounds. Well, that means that I need to have uh, an internet connection and or recordings and or some way to listen to it and or a subscription to Spotify or YouTube or someplace that I can go hear it. So we're going to, these, you don't need to, I mean, they, if I, with, with, with the running analogy, 
I need time. I need to have a decent pair of shoes. And um, I need a, a route that I know is the distance that I need to go. I need a, uh, some way to keep track of how much time. And I might need some strategies on how to survive running, in my case, 3.1. And in someone else's case, is 13.1 miles. Um, so by when? We have the big, hairy, audacious goal. We've got a specific and measurable plan for attaining it. <clears throat> we know what actions and resources that we need. Now, by when? So at the beginning, I talked about, you know, maybe have a BHAG that, that gets you through the summer because the summer can be just this big open gap of space. And uh, not to get on a soapbox too much here, but I really feel like there's an opportunity to um, do nothing. You know, the world is different. And so there's an opportunity. You, one could decide to just like say the heck with it and just binge, binge watch and eat whatever the heck you want. And just sort of, like I said, lazy river of life. And I, I personally feel like that's a incredibly, um, I was going to say the word that came to mind was irresponsible. That's a little more mean or perjurative than I meant for it to. What I will say is that um, I believe that the silver lining in this situation is there's an opportunity for all of us to level up, level up as humans, level up as musicians, level up as teachers, level up as people, level up as family members, level up in any way that you can imagine it. And I really want to encourage you, um, like, be aware of your of your tendencies. And if you need to blow off some steam and take the weekend off and binge watch, you should apologize to no one, least of all me. But um, when Monday morning comes, or however you decided to set up your schedule, well, it's time to, to, there's an opportunity for you to turn things around. And I hope to come out the other side of this in better shape, with stronger relationships in my family and with my friends, to come out as a better teacher. I'm going to learn some um, new platforms that I'm, I've got, I'm looking at things you can't see, but there's sort of like this Willy Wonka chocolate factory of, um, cables and lighting and microphones and mic stands and all sorts of stuff that's just sort of hanging off just off camera um, that I'm, I'm working on look, uh, learning over the course of the summer so that when I go back to teaching, I teach at Carnegie Mellon University, when I go back to teaching in the fall, I'm more comfortable and facile with some of these tools. And I know that some of my students, uh, boy, this is turning into a bigger soapbox than I intended, but I, I hope you find it relevant. Um, if I have students who want to follow in Christopher Bill's footsteps because large ensembles are going to be a real challenge for every organization on the planet moving forward, at least in the, in the short term. Well, what are musicians going to do? And part of the answer, I believe, is going to be um, products like uh, uh, Chris Bill has put out. And so um, uh, I feel obliged to, to know enough about it that I can help guide my students. So I need to understand the platforms and I need to, we were having a robust conversation just before we came on air about this platform that we're on now, this webinar jam that we're on now or Zoom if you're watching it on Zoom um, uh, or if you're watching it after the fact on YouTube or someplace else that just to, to have a familiarity with the platforms is incredibly important. And so what uh, uh, an additional BHAG for me is to learn um, what I can about these platforms. And we don't have time to go into the specifics of those. Let's stay uh, more focused on these. Um, but I want to really, I, I strongly want to encourage you to spend time developing your skills this summer. Uh, and you can define those skills any which way that you want. And my hope is that I'm providing you a, a, a structure a, a, a by which you can do that. So, um, do, do me a favor. We're going to take just another little quick, maybe even 30 seconds. But I want you to write down, if you haven't been, I want you to write down. In fact, here, I'll do the, I'll do it for you in real time. Um, a specific measurable goal with actions and resources and time related to my BHAG. So take 30 seconds or a minute and create one thing that you can do between now and whatever time. Let's say between now and next week. What is an action that you could take? On your market, get set, go.
All right, that was about a minute. I'll share mine. So we have, <clears throat> how do you learn, how do you turn, learn about, learn, oh, okay, we'll talk about it here in a second. That's a really good one. <clears throat> um, so here was mine. So I have chicken scratch, you won't be able to read it. So for me, with my BHAG, which is to um, do the back, I'm pointing over there as though you could see over there, but you cannot. There's a lamp right there. But there is also over there a bookcase, and on the bookcase is the, the Beck song reader. So I'm going to take, I, the, the goal is to, to pick one of the 20 songs, figure out what key, what instrumentation, and record a scratch track of me doing it. And so then that's a specific and measurable thing. I'll come out the other side with a recording that, that I will have had to decide how fast, what key, what instruments I'm going to use on it. Then I'm going to, uh, in terms of the actions and resources, I'll have to read through this song, practice singing it, practice ukulele. I have cajon, I'm gonna use probably euphonium to play bass line on it, I'm just guessing right now. So I'll need those instruments, I'll need some time, I'll need recording equipment, excuse me, and I'm gonna do this by the end of next week. Um, so hopefully you have now a, a little map, a little uh, roadmap that you can blow out into a bigger one. And so if if the goal is to do, um, the to go back to Robbins, um, sorry, Robin, we're using you so often, but it's a really great one for, for the purposes of this explanation. We got 12 keys. Like I'm assuming uh, that you, well, you didn't say anything about modes. So we have major and minor. So now it's really easy to figure out. And it could be the case that um, in terms of the 12 key centers, you're just going to do one a week over the next 12 weeks. You got, uh, you're, you're, you're closing in with 12 times seven is 70, 84. Okay. So we're getting close to, to um, uh, our hundred day goal. And it doesn't have to be a hundred day goal. I just sort of threw it out there, but something that is, I think six months is too long. Personally, I think three months is probably about the sweet spot, hundred days, maybe. Uh, and a month I would say is a good minimum. Because um, once we have identified this, the goals, then we're going to talk about um, the next phase of this uh, talk will be how to turn these into habits, how to how to set your routine up in such a way um, that it is uh, a thing that you get up and you do every day. Because that's that's going to be the trick for you moving forward is how to uh, how to make sure that you you get there. You know how to make sure that you put the car on cruise control and keep pointing it towards the place you want to go and steer it so that you're, you're actually making steady progress there. So my personal recommendation is somewhere between one and three months. I think beyond that, it's a little too fuzzy. Um, not that it isn't useful to have a, a, a longer term goal, but I think in terms of a thing that pops you out of bed and makes you want to um, go after a thing, uh, I would suggest even if you had a, a year long goal or if you set up a, uh, uh, a resolution or if you uh, made, you know, you, you did a resolution at the beginning of the year, I think you're going to have more success if you break it into more manageable chunks because it's just too fuzzy uh, otherwise. And the, the, the event, well, put it this way, could you have predicted that we would be having this conversation in this way, um, in this environment 100 days ago? Uh, my hunch is no. And so there's just, too many unknowns and 30 to 90 days, I think is a good uh, place to, actually I'll show you another video here because this is a, a thing um, that uh, sets up the next part of the talk, I think rather nicely. See if I can do this and come back without um, muting or doing something else strange. So this is Mary Bowden. I'm gonna keep talking, oh, well, to the best of my ability to talk over a trumpet player. Okay, so that's Mary Bowden, and that was day 52 of her 100 days of practice challenge. And if you're a Star Wars geek, then you probably have figured out that that was the one from May the 4th, because that's Star Wars Day. But the 100 day practice challenge is a thing that has popped up on the internet. Mary is, uh, she teaches at Shenandoah Conservatory. Um, she's actually, uh, uh, she's great. You should, she's founder of Serif Brass, 
a phenomenal player. But she and others have, in fact, I have some students from Carnegie Mellon who are doing the 100 day uh, challenge. And it is just, it's a, um, it's an effort to do exactly what we're talking about. So we now have this big, hairy, audacious goal. We now have an action plan, which is we have a specific and measurable goal and actions and resources, verbs and nouns that we're going to use to get us where it is that we want to go. Awesome. Now, how do we do it? And so what you want to end up with is a, uh, uh, a system. You want to create a system and a structure so that this is a thing that you can adhere to and that you can accomplish. Um, and it goes back to the, the saying that I, that I threw at you earlier, which is, how do you eat an elephant? Well, it's one bite at a time. And so in order for you to um, get to where you're going, you need to establish routines and habits because it is you are who you are based on the routine, but based on the things that you do every day consistently. Are you the kind of person who flosses or are you not the kind of person who flosses? Are you the kind of person who practices every day? And are you not the kind of person who practices every day? And if you want to become the kind of person who practices every day, well, then what are the ways in which you, uh, you can make that happen? And so habit and routine formation is what I want to talk about next. But actually, I want to before I forget. So how do you turn learn about the online platforms into a smart goal? So here's how I will. Let's first we, we'll just pick it apart. And this will be a great reinforcement of the of the commentary. So specific and measurable. <clears throat> so I am uh, one of the things that I want to uh, learn is to how to make those videos like Christopher Bill has done. And so what I want to do is to create one of those videos where there are at least four of me doing something. And what I will probably do as an aside is I'm probably going to do it on the back thing. I'm probably going to record myself uh, playing all the instruments and put it together into a video thing. So that means that I'm actually going to um, have to use a platform like uh, I'm going to use Final Cut. Um, and so what I need to learn about the online platforms um, for me will be, I need to know how to use Final Cut Pro enough so that I can create a Christopher Bill style overdub video that I can then deliver um, to YouTube. Now, if you're specifically asking about the online platform, then what I would do is I would need to, I, uh, uh, I let's see, what's a good example? Um, well, here's the thing that I want to learn to do and that I have not done is I want to use um, YouTube Live. And I don't think it's like a, I don't think it's brain surgery, but I've just not done it. So I, I don't know what all is going to be involved. And that's one of the platforms I'm interested in, in, in learning. So what I'll probably do is I will take that video and I will um, have some kind of a watch party or premiere where I go on YouTube Live and I set up the video and then I play the video and then talk about the video. And so that, I can pick a date. And so I can start at the other end of that. That's the beautiful part of this. The big hairy edition goal is I want to get more familiar with YouTube Live. And I'm going to use all those things that we just talked about as the actions and the resources. But if I put a date on it <laughs> and it's specific and measurable, then then there's a, a fire in my belly that I have to get get moving on the whatever. So I'm going to premiere that song. Let's say I'm going to premiere that song on August 1st. Well, that means I need to be familiar with all that stuff by the time that happens, which means I might need to look at some YouTube videos about how do you do YouTube Live? Do I have the equipment that I need? Do I need any additional resources? Um, do I need to set up uh, an appointment with uh, probably one of my students who knows way more about it than I do or one of my kids that could probably talk me through it? So those uh, are all ways in which I could get at um, uh, solving the online platform thing. It begin with the end in mind is a different way to say it. The goal is that I want to be able to have a weekly YouTube live or Facebook live show. Okay, well that means that I know how to use that platform. I know that I have enough content to go out there and then I reverse engineer it from there. <clears throat> and so habit formation. Unless there are any more questions. I think I've covered most of those. Um, if you have more, be sure to stick them in the chat and I'll get to them uh, uh, once again. Consistency is the key. There's a, a book by a guy named James Clear, which is called Atomic Habits, which I strongly recommend. It's a fantastic book. There's another book called The Power of Habit by a man named Charles Duhigg. And those two 
folks have spent a lot of time unpacking uh, habit formation. And I'm a big believer in the value of habit formation. And that's really where I spend the bulk of my time is thinking about um, where do I want to go and what habits, what things that I will, if I put them in my day and I do them over enough times, what will they cause to happen? So with the running analogy, um, I need to get out on the road as often as my body will allow without hurting myself. You know, I don't want to injure myself because then I'm, I'm in big trouble. But I know I need to do things at a consistent in a consistent way. <clears throat> and so there are some things that you can uh, should know and some things that you should consider. Here's the thing that you may not know, but that you should know. Um, the way that you learn a new thing is that a couple of uh, a stimulus happens in your brain. And um, let's say you're learning the saxophone um, scale pattern. So you're learning new um uh, finger patterns uh, for the keys. And so what's happening is the first time you've done a pattern, your brain lights up in a certain way. And uh, they say that, that uh, neurons that fire together, wire together. And so the more often you do that thing, then those same areas of the brain light up. But what happens is every time you do that, there's another coating of a thing called myelin that goes across, that connects those two, sort of like insulation on, a, on, a, on an electrical cord. So if you were to peel back the insulation on an electrical cord, you would see just the bare wires. And so that would be the first instance. And then the more often you do that thing, then the brain literally physiologically adds a layer of this gray matter, myelin, to that pathway. And so that's what they say, you know, you, you've heard um, uh, muscle memory um, uh, as, a, as a concept, perhaps. And that's when you've done things enough times that the neurons fire and simultaneously they, they light up together. And that is the way you learn a thing. And so it's one of the challenges when you, you know, you hear someone say it's, you know, about breaking bad habits. We are better off starving the bad habit by creating a new habit because uh, you, you kind of can't undo it's it's there's <laughs> there's a wire up there. And so you're better off if you've um, lear mislearned a fingering, you're much better off concentrating on learning the new fingering and reinforcing the new fingering and or the new pattern. Uh, than you are to spend any time thinking about the old one because eventually the new one will be screaming so loudly in your head and will be so strong that that takes the place of the old one. So you need to um, uh, focus on frequency because it is getting these things to happen regularly and consistently that they become routine and they become habit. So here are some ways that you can do that, that have been very, very successful uh, to for me and for my students. And uh, I recommend them to anybody I come in contact with, and that's you now. So look at, um, look for triggers in your day. Pay attention to how you go through the day. And actually, just as an aside, one thing that might be useful for you, if you've not done this and you're going into a summer break or you have lots more time on your hands than you have, take a day or two and pay attention to how your energy rises and falls over the course of the day. And pay attention to how your energy levels rise and fall uh, in relation to meals uh, over the course of the day and or physical activity over the course of the day. And what you'll probably notice is that uh, you will have certain parts of the day where you have lots of energy and certain parts of the day where you're just like dragging. And so you can start to tailor your days around those peaks and valleys, but you need to know where they are. So you can set up a reminder on your phone. Beg your pardon. I pointed at my watch and said phone, which is interesting. But you could set up a reminder on your watch or on your phone to, to, to ding at every hour or every two hours or every half an hour, whatever it is. And then just sort of do a little inventory. What's my energy level on a scale of one to five right now? It's a four. It's a two. It's a one. It's a six. It's a negative three. It's a hundred and five. And I'm really ready to rock and roll. Um, and if you can start to notice patterns, then you can start to tailor the activities that you need and want to do in your day around those patterns. So I know that um, I tend to get lots of ideas and I tend to be very, uh, uh, I have a lot of energy and focus right when I wake up. 
so I that's when I um, I try and do a lot of creative thinking and I try and I might do a little bit of research and reading um, and or I might uh, get out for a walk or I might just sort of I want to take advantage of that and then later in the day I know crash um, it's going to be uh, between three and five not the entire time but somewhere in that time of day boom I bought them out well that is not a good time for me to um, uh, try and make a ton of progress on a goal that has the potential to frustrate me because I'm just setting myself up for disaster. But it might be an awesome time to empty the dishwasher, fold the laundry, answer some low hanging emails that won't take long, do stuff that's just sort of doesn't require a lot of brain power. It's, it's just sort of the, the laundry basket is clean and it is unfolded and now it's folded. I didn't have to pay any attention to doing anything except folding it and putting it away. So if you can um, tailor your day to the activities and your energy level, it's just an additional um, uh, arrow in your quiver. So uh, in addition to that, then look for triggers or, or shifts in the day. So right after I wake up, I dot, dot, dot. And for some of us, it's I grab my phone and I check Facebook and see if anybody liked the picture of the food that I took. Or I first thing I do when I get up is I go brush my teeth. Or the first thing that I do is that I blah. And wh whatever those things are, just pay attention to your patterns. Um, as, so it, meal times is an opportunity. When you wake up, uh, when you go to bed, uh, certain times a day can be a trigger. So noon could be a trigger. Um, and the, the reason that the trigger is important is that we're going to, we, now we want to add something new that we weren't doing. We want to add saxophone practice on those scales. We want to add bass practice um, on the sting tunes. We want to add running. So we want to add a thing to our um, uh, rhythm, uh, the rhythm, rhythm of our day that we have not had. So it's, easier if we can connect it with a trigger. <clears throat> so it could be the case. Here's an example from my life. Um, about a, two years ago, I guess now I've lost track. Um, I just, I, I don't like when I go to the dentist, I don't like the scrapey part. I hate that part. Like really hate that part. And um, I want that part to be over with as soon as possible. So I was talking with the hygienist about it and she said, you floss? And I said, ah, I floss great two weeks before the dentist appointment and then two or three days after and then eh, gets a little wishy-washy. Well, I decided, well, she said, so, I mean, there's your answer. If you want to get rid of that, that's how you're going to have to do it. And so I, <clears throat> I decided I was going to turn this into a habit. So I have a, I downloaded an app on my phone called Habitify, H-A-B-I-T-I-F-Y, and it's a habit tracker. You don't have to use an app like that, but in some way you want to keep track of what are your successes and failures. And so um, for me, the habit was I wanted to learn. I wanted to not learn. I wanted to floss more consistently and frequently. So I had a trigger that was a little notification that came up on my phone at about eight o'clock at night. And the other thing is that I put the floss on the nightstand next to my bed. So when I came to bed, like I know that going to bed is one of the things that's going to happen today. And so if I put the floss right next to the bed, well, before I put my glasses down, I see that the floss is there. I've seen the notification on my phone. The trigger is I'm in, I'm in the bedroom getting ready to go to bed that that's the trigger, so that that's the trigger for me to floss. And now I haven't missed a day of flossing in, uh, I don't know, a year and a half. And uh, and by the way, it works. So the, the scrapey time is less and less every time. I get a gold star and a pat on the back uh, every time I go to the dentist now. So for you, if it's the saxophone thing, then um, it could be that as uh, soon as lunch is done every day, I put the dishes away, I brush my teeth, and then I go play the saxophone. It could be that uh, as soon as I get up, I take the dog out, and as soon as I come back in, then I play the bass for a minute. And so here's here's a, 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 um, a couple of helpful, I don't want to say tricks, but uh, helpful ways for you to maintain these habits. One is to track it. Just keep track of what you're doing. Jerry Seinfeld, I'm a huge Jerry Seinfeld fan. He talks about in one of his uh, interviews how he would he had a printed out calendar and he would put a, a Sharpie, he put an X on a on a 
on a day that he wrote comedy. And then once you get enough of a chain going, you don't want to break the chain. So that's what's nice about a, a, a habit tracker like Habitify is that it allows you some way to dis, to, to see um, whether you're having success or not. This is where the actions and, uh, and resources become really, really important because those are the actions, those are the, that's the thing you're going to be doing every day. You, if you tie it to a trigger, then that will help. If you track it, that will help. Um, if you have a, an accountability partner, that can help. And that's where the 100 days of practice thing is interesting and useful because um, Mary knows that she committed to this thing and she puts up a video for 62 days out of 100. On day 63, there's some number of her uh, followers and fa fans and friends will say, is everything OK? Because I know you're taking this seriously and you've made this public goal, which can be a, a, a useful thing. It's not mandatory. It depends on how your personal brain is working. Um, <clears throat> but it needs to uh, some accountability, uh, just enough accountability that it's not like, Ugh. but it's like, oh, I better do that thing because if I don't, then I'm letting so and so down. So that's where if you have a buddy, uh, you're a saxophone player and your buddy is a, a percussionist, well, it doesn't mean that you, can't both practice together. You could set up a FaceTime and mute it and you could both work. We just, I'm accountable to you and you're accountable to me. And at noon, Monday through Friday, we're putting FaceTime on, muted for 20 minutes and I'm going to practice and you're going to practice. And I can look through the screen and see that you're practicing. And you look through the screen and see that I'm practicing. And you can take, uh, so you, could, you know, you can, you can use that as a, as another one. Um, and then um, uh, two, two more um, things that I want to um, point out to you. Uh, one is to create, uh, well, there's the, the the rule of two, which is that if you miss one day, okay, but you're never allowed to miss two days in a row. Uh, and that go, hand in hand with that is a sense of compassion. You know, if you're trying to learn a new thing, just like the GPS will adjust, if you're not going to make it on the on the amount of time that you thought it was going to take, be gentle on yourself. If you need to take a day off, take a day off. But if you adhere to the rule of twos, you can't take two days off in a row. That just means that you have to redouble your efforts to do it the second day. So self-care is a, a is, I take it very seriously, and I want you to take it seriously as well. So bear in mind that in the SMART goal, we had our, our big, hairy, audacious goal. We turned it into a SMART goal with a time limit on it. But be gentle you might find that you need to give yourself a little more time and you might find that it's going faster than you think. So the rule of two can keep you um, um, a little more, uh, it, it's a nice com com um, combination of compassion and rigidity. Like, okay, I took today off for a good reason, and but I can't miss today. And actually today is a good example uh, for me to, I'll share this with you uh, as well as the the next thing, which is uh, about uh, setting up your environment in such a way for success. So yesterday was supposed to be a run day. So I'm supposed to run Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and walk Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And I just did not feel like running yesterday. And so um, uh, now I know I have to run today. And so that's just a thing that I know, but I've also created an environment in which success is if not automatic, it's really, really, really easy. So I created the environment next to my um, uh, bed with the floss. I just took I took the floss and I put it next to my bed. That's adapting my environment to be in alignment with my goals. And so, um, you know, and if you're just starting out, I'll say just as an aside before we go back to the environment thing for a second, um, put the barrier to success really, really low. If you want to learn to meditate, that's another one that I've tackled in the last few years. I decided that success would be meditating for one minute. One minute. That's success. And so I get the check mark for the day if I meditated for one minute. And so with running or with flossing, it could be I'm just going to floss between two of my teeth. Because what happens invariably is you do that and you go, well, I feel like an idiot. I've already got the thing. I'm going to do whatever. So. Um, uh, Chris Castellanos from the Boston Brass had a great piece of advice, which was when you used to go back and forth from school to home, as soon as you get home, 
take your horn out of this case and stick it on your bed. So if you don't have a, a instrument stand, that should be the next purchase. So you put your, get your saxophones out. Don't let them be in the case. Stick it on the stand and put it in a place that you see it every time you walk through. Because then you're creating this visual reminder, that's a thing that I need to do. And then you make it impossible for you not to. And so what I have done today, I'll show you right now. I have, I'm ready to run out the door. I don't want to run today, but I have to because I missed yesterday. And so I've created a situation where as soon as this call is done, I'm going on a run with my son because I, I told him we were and we have a date to do it. So I have an accountability partner. I put the clothes on that I'm going to take this thing off and then we're going out for a run. So I've created the environment where failure is next to impossible. Now, it can be that once I get out there that I can adjust the amount that I'm going to run, but I'm by golly going to run today. So let's try and wrap it up because we're closing down on the end of it here. You got to put down the ducky if you want to learn to play the saxophone. The truer words were never spoken. That's a really uh, uh, fantastic one. <clears throat> Last you say, nice. Oh, very cool. Hike in the Grand Canyon. That's not bad. Big, hairy, audacious goal. Pops you out of bed in the morning. Like, that would be cool. If I could accomplish, if I can get those songs recorded, ah, I'm going to feel like a million bucks or run that half marathon or learn all those saxophone things. I'm going to have a very specific and measurable goal, actions, verbs, and resources, nouns, and I have a deadline on it. And it's probably between 30 days and 100 days, somewhere in there. And then I'm going to set up my environment in such a way that um, success is easy. I've paid attention to when I have a lot of energy in the day. I've made it so that I see the floss or the running shoes or the saxophone. Uh, I have an accountability partner, either in the house or virtually. And I'm just day after day after day after day after day. Doesn't mean you can't modify your goals. Doesn't mean that once you get to it, sometimes you get to the top of a mountain to realize that the next mountain is the mountain that you want to be on. But that discipline and habit formation is incredibly valuable. And it's the thing that will get you from where you are to where you want to be. I said it at the beginning and I said it in the middle and I'll say it here at the end. You have each one of you and each one of us has an opportunity to come out the other side of this quarantine, whenever that is, healthier, stronger relationships, uh, uh, increased, um, improved skill set, um, uh, calmer, more well-rested, more well-fed. You have the, cap the capacity and the capability of doing all of those things. And you're, you're, you have a fan and a cheerleader in me. If there's anything I can do to help you uh, or if you have any questions about any of this, hit me up. Um, I don't want to prattle on too long. I've gone on for one minute and 21 seconds longer than I promised. So I will shut my pie hole unless there are more questions. If not, then I want to take a moment to thank the Society for Online Music Education and KHS America for making this all possible and inviting me to be a part of this party. I think this is just fantastic. I'm uh, very glad that uh, the Society for Online Music Education is a thing. I am glad, I, I am just glad to know that I live on a planet where that is a thing that exists. And KHS America has been a wonderful supporter of me and the groups that I've been affiliated with. Amazing believers in music education. Uh, and I'm happy to, uh, to um, stand shoulder to shoulder with them and uh, at least in what you're creating here. So I see some other notifications about the upcoming PD conference. And I think that's it. Now what do I do? I'm not, I don't know what happens at the end of this. Do I, am I supposed to sing a song or do something? Or do I like, do I just like fully fade out to the side of the, oh, you? No? <laughs> we'll just turn off your camera and microphone and say thank you. Thank you so much. This was a fantastic session. I will do both of those things. Thank you very much. I, uh, I look forward to help. I'm at your assist, uh, your beck and call. You need a thing. Find me online and let me know. I'm happy to be involved. Thanks very much. Bye.